Uh, yeah, you do a lot of uh, libraries too. Um, when you're marketing to them, are you? Now I know some people do librarian conventions. I've heard of those. Have yeah. you ever done a librarian convention? Yep, they have what are called showcases, and you get six minutes or five minutes or whatnot. And sometimes you can even find out when they're going to have a meeting about summer reading program, which is a big, big, big deal for them, and go to that and say, can I have five minutes of your time right before lunch? You know, I'll do a couple minutes and, and hand out my stuff and then to stand around at lunchtime. I like to do it right before lunchtime so that when they're done, they're getting lunch, I can be there to talk to them, I hand them a card, ask them, answer a question, whatnot. So I, I do those. Um, I've done several of those in my time. Uh, librarians are very persnickety as far as their times are going. They'll call them and say, uh, I need June 3rd at 2 o'clock. I can be there at 4. Oh no, it's got to be 2. It's always 2 o'clock. It's always on Monday at 2 o'clock. So you're saying, I only have so many Mondays. I only have so many Wednesdays at that time. So you try to convince them to move and work with you a little bit and sometimes it's hard. I know that they've built their audience up to come at a certain day at a certain time. I understand that. But it makes it a little more tricky for you to try to book a program at schools when there's no flexibility except and and sometimes you get the feeling that it's I've got to have a warm body on Tuesday at three o'clock and if it's not you I'm going down the list to find the next warm body I can find to fill that slot for me and it's you know sometimes it's, it's not good or it's bad it's just filling it mm -hmm. um, on the libraries they have a theme every year is that correct mm -hmm. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about how you uh, come across the theme and how you find that kind of information out? Well, it's a multi-state theme, and right now I think it's in 30 states, which is great because I can build my show for Ohio, and I can go into West Virginia and Pennsylvania and Michigan, and I can take the same show. It used to be that this state was doing outer space, and this was doing cowboys, and this was doing something else, and you had to kind of make a cowboy outer space uh, juggling show of some sort, you know, and try to pull those parts together and make it look like something. This way it's, it's nice. Uh, what you can do is go to your state library and ask them for summer reading theme 2013 or 2014 or whatever the year is and it'll, it'll come up. There's a, even a place, and I saw it and I can't remember where it was, that lists for the next three or four years what those themes are going to be. Like this year it's dig into books, dig into reading. So everything with excavation and, and, and all that. One year it was hats off to reading. Another year it was something else. And so you, you build your show around that theme, and it's a, it's a good seller for you. It works with the library. And the librarians, they're not as particular about learning educational things as it is to get the kids to read books, take out books, and use the library. Those are the big things that they're working on. So if you can incorporate that into a fun show, that's all they need. It's not as, not as particular as the schools that have to have an educational message on target for that specific uh, agenda that they need. Okay. Um, Mark, are you doing uh, internet marketing or are you doing mailings uh, when you approach these uh, markets? Yes. <laughs> I do a little bit of both. I, uh, I buy emails. Uh, you can build your own email list, but with schools it's a little tricky because they have filtering systems. If you have, you're sending stuff out and you've got a website and you've got a video on it, they've got a wall up around the school because they're thinking that anything coming in that's got video attaches pornography. So automatically it shuts that down. So you can't do that. I go to the uh, Principals Association and say, I've got a card like you send out for me. With, and it'll have your address on it because that gets through because they belong to this association. Could you do that for me? Yeah. So I pay them some money. I give them the card. They put it up. They send it out. And I get, get results because it gets through. And once I get that principal's email back, then I can put it in my file and use it. Sometimes I can get it through that way because it's easier that way. But sometimes the official school one that I would get otherwise would bring the drawbridge down in a big hurry, slam the door shut on me in a hurry because of the, of the video that I have. Um, so getting around that. And I do still make mailings. I think people still like to get the card. I don't go to the elaborate mailings like you used to with a cover letter and a brochure and a page of recommendations. They don't have time for all that. They empty that over the wastebasket as they look at it. Mm -hmm. Oversized postcard, full color, front and back, slick, well produced. They can look at that again. It catches their eye. They'll take a moment to read it. Then that's when they go, here, give this to the, to the guidance counselor. She can call this guy.